we talked about technology being able to deal with inflation. So Gary said technology will take care of inflation. Gary, I wanted you to expound upon that. What exactly did you mean and how does technology deal with inflation? Well, he, he, here's a good example. I think here's a reasonable example anyway. And this is why I'm so focused on having a open market that doesn't have any kind of intervention. Um, because if you don't intervene with a market, supply and demand will actually speak to each other and they'll, they'll start behaving appropriately. If I look at the crude oil market and the natural gas markets, all the innovation, you know, we've been, a guy named Daniel Jurgen became very, very famous in the late nineties. He wrote two or three books, must've been books this big with all this analysis on peak oil. The whole thing was peak oil. His whole deal was we're running out of crude oil. We're running out of reasonably priced crude oil. And the world is going to come to an end because crude oil's peaked out. That was at least uh, 15 years ago. And I have not seen any peak anything. And we have his, his whole case was crude oil is going to have to be priced at 180 to $250. And like that has not happened. Um, in fact, I would suggest that all the innovation, all the fracking that has made the United States the largest proven reserve holder of fossil fuel, that all happened at $30 crude oil. See, at $30 crude oil, they don't stop drilling because people that go to school for eight years to learn how to drill holes in the ground, that is what they're going to do. It's not about price. What their management teams did is, hey, if you want to drill, you got to figure out how to drill in a $30 environment. And that is when technology showed up. And they started, instead of drilling one well, they began drilling one platform. They'd use a platform, drill a well, and then go horizontal six, eight, 12, 16 times where one platform, one rig now has eight to 12 different holes that it's drilling into. So, we have a natural gas price 25 years ago was $3 to $6. Uh, in fact, $3 to $7. Today, natural gas has a difficult time exceeding $2.50. So we've had a natural gas price go down over 25 years. Uh, and that is all technology. So I now have streaming everything. I have streaming video. I look pretty much like a CNN newscaster. This is this is technology, dude. OK, for twenty dollars, I'm basically running a CNN platform, a Fox News studio and a uh, NPR audio system. And I don't have any of the heavy, heavy expenses, uh, heavy capital requirements that, say, Ted Turner had when he was building CNN down in Atlanta. Right. The quality here, the quality of this video alone is better than what CNN had when Ted Turner started. That's what we're talking about. Technology has a way of compressing everything. And so when I see the digitization, this is why I keep saying, hey, look, let's not think about this as money. This is not just about money. It's also about media. Look, look at what we're doing. This is decentralized. I have a $3,000 computer, $600 or $6,000 camera here, some audio equipment, and I'm launching into the World Wide Web. I'm accessing every pipe in the world without all the burden and expense of holding utilities and Anderson Cooper. And the old way of doing business is simply getting eradicated, in my opinion, by this technology. So th these are my examples of how technology solves inflation. Uh, you know, people don't need to buy CNN Fox and all the news channels to get news today. Here's an example, right? Now I don't have to buy a $180 a year cable program. I can just go on a network and get my news from right here. So there's many, many, the newspapers. Okay. I don't read newspapers anymore. For the most part, I read the financial times from London. The rest of my news comes through X comes through YouTube comes through a multitude of different uh, pathways and those pathways are doing it cheaper, faster, and better. So cheaper, faster, and better is a de-inflationary, right? Like if, if my TV screen gets 10 times bigger, technology is allowing me to beat inflation because I'm not paying 
an incremental penny for every square inch or every pixel. I'm getting leverage from this technology boom. And I would say we're not even halfway there. yet. So I, I think everything goes near cost to zero, dude. This is why I've always said, if you're selling software, sell software for 10 year fixed price contracts. Like the, the stuff we're doing with Node 40 right now, it is staggeringly interesting. The amount of data that we're going to be able to push into AI is staggering, man. But AI is going to actually solve so many problems. Now, I think we're many years off, but we're here right now. And you have the ability to invest in businesses right now that allow us to take advantage of this technological boom, um, which I don't think we have 5% saturation yet of true technological boom where we're being hyper efficient creators okay may sell things cheaper but what if you have less expense what if you have less people to pay along the way the toll maker cnn the film guy what if there's just so few less people in the food chain that i can offer things at lower prices and the quality is better the the rules are much more open for everyone inclusive not exclusive i find a lot of a lot of our technology is pretty inclusive right it's it's for salesforce.com right like salesforce packaging it's only for a certain type of clients not for every small merchant so we're going to have people copy and reprogram crms that are much better than salesforce and do not require the expense uh, of such a premier program. How might the adoption of Bitcoin as a legal tender by countries influence global geopolitical dynamics? I think it depends on who it is. Uh, I think if Turkey does it, which I think Turkey's in a, like, to me, the, the countries that are going to be, the countries that are going to do this are very similar to will have the same type of characteristics or issues that Michael Saylor had with his business. They will realize they don't have the ability to print money. This will be their common core characteristic. They've tapped into somebody else's ability to tap uh, to, to, to source funding, meaning they can print money. Um, they've probably aligned themselves with a military complex like America. And they're piggy in the middle, geopolitically and geolocation-wise. They're piggy in the middle of a lot of conflict. And I see Turkey being like, wow, man, you're on the edge of so much conflict and problems. Uh, where they're maybe also needing to buy energy. They have to buy resources. They're short resources, right? I think some of those countries that have, they're, they're terrified as to their future, You'll see them begin to take some moves and they may be small. I mean, micro strategy didn't just move in with all of it on day one. He started allocating. Um, if we see that, I think that begins to change the dynamic. Or maybe we get four or five more southern, you know, uh, South American countries. I think the the uh, El Salvador experiment is interesting, but it's not. It's going to be it, it needs to be one of ten. Right. It needs to be. You can't. It's just too small. Um, and but I think that most com countries will not be left with many other options. Do you know, the option is going to be either align yourself with a big powerhouse or. And or quietly align yourself with the, the, the new world order, which I I believe is digital um, and, and to believe that. Um, these people aren't listening to and watching what Fidelity is doing and what BlackRock's doing. It's hard for me to believe that no country is sitting down really, really going, hey, what's going on here? They may not like it. They may not understand it. But I don't think you keep going, okay, this is a nothing burger. You have too many, dude, you have too many serious, serious companies in this space now. So I think everyone's looking at this. Thank you.